I am Kaylin Anderson and this is The Artist's Corner. I am very happy about this particular interview because I am a big fan of this guest this evening. He plays the guitar, he's in two bands, and he is very talented. I'm here with Patrick Avery. Patrick, how are you? I'm good, Kaylin. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Yes, it is great to have you here tonight. Welcome to my show. Well, when was the first time you realized that you were musically talented? I was very young and uh, my brother had left for college and I was always trying to steal his guitar away from him, but I uh, never quite got the chance. So uh, when he went away to college, he left it under his bed and I uh, always used to go through his stuff all the time, rooting through, getting clothes and stuff. And I went through and found a Fender Stratocaster under his bed and I think it was two days later I wrote my first song ever. I must have been in uh, seventh grade. I think I was right around then. Ooh. Well, you notice your brother as one of your musical influences. Can you name me some more prominent musical artists that influenced you? Oh, yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, acoustic fingerstyle guitar, I love uh, Craig D'Andrea, Antoine Dufour, Andy McKee. Uh, a lot of guys out of Canada are really keeping it real with the, uh, with the alternative uh, acoustic guitar. So, Well, you've been playing a lot of these songs, but I want to know, get right down to it, what inspired you to play these songs? Uh, first time I saw, um, I saw this guy, Craig D'Andre, he was probably 20-something, and I saw him on YouTube play um, a song called Stages of Obsession. And I just saw a young guy, and he was on the internet getting famous, playing guitar. He didn't need a singer, just doing it all by himself. And uh, I'm a very solitary person. I don't like a lot of creative, uh, different people putting their heads together on one thing. I feel like too many chefs can spoil the soup, so sometimes I like to keep it by myself. Like it's a perfect opportunity to do that. So. Well, you mentioned watching... YouTube videos, that means you must have come from a wealthy family and whatnot. They have all those internet and luxuries like that. So. Yeah, yeah, How definitely. How were you raised? Uh, my family definitely supported me the whole way. I mean, my parents brought me my, bought me my first few guitars, and uh, I can't say I've had a rough lifestyle. I've had a very nice uh, lifestyle, especially thanks uh, to my parents. They kept it real for me and uh, really supported me. My whole family's been supporting me, so hopefully I can get somewhere with that. Well, since you have a, li a really nice lifestyle, you're not playing any like aggressive hood and shooting up music, are you? Since you Never, nice no. Well, what kind of music do you play then? Um, I like to be positive. I mean, I feel like there are real issues that need to be addressed, mm -hmm. but um, I feel like a lot of people that are on the radio or uh, just making it big in media nowadays, whether it be movies or books, are kind of getting their message out there in the wrong way, just kind of as a gimmicky thing. And I feel like if I have a gimmick, it's just being real, so being real. Do you think that's going to get you money, though? Uh, no, it never usually doesn't, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are your favorite songs to play that might get you some money? Uh, favorite songs? Um, I cited uh, Stages of Obsession earlier by Craig D'Andrew. I had to learn that. Um, but uh, with my cover band, I like to play some songs like, um, I like to play John Mayer's song, Daughters. It's a very good song. It's yes, probably it a radio hit that I do like, so. Hmm. John Mayer. Well, what is your driving horse? force behind that music, such as John Mayer. You mentioned him. Well, what else? The driving force is, uh, uh, I'd love to say my love of music. That's always very important, uh, expressing myself. We got to say money. If I didn't say money, like yeah, I said, I wouldn't be real. Yeah, it's all about the money sometimes. Uh, but no, just uh, love, just inner peace. You can't, uh, sometimes you can't, I can't have a desk job and sit at a computer my whole life. I got to do something I, I love to do, and this is definitely it. So. Well, you talked about money a lot, so what can we expect from your album besides a lot of record sales and platinum plaques and ringtone deals? Uh, hopefully if I get some ringtone deals, some platinum plaques, it'll be uh, a little bit of a blend between what I'm doing now and uh, some hip-hop, some hip-hop-oriented uh, definitely additives onto it to just try to give it a little different zest. I haven't really heard uh, fingerstyle acoustic blended with... Uh, underground hip-hop too much so well so can we expect some freestyle some hot 16s <laughs> maybe i got 16 up my sleeve sometimes Ooh, we have to have a cypher sometimes <laughs> yes. back and forth yes yes Keep sir freestyling <laughs> yes sir well what else can we hear from there besides do you dabble in a bit of country or pop music uh maybe something with taylor swift perhaps covers in the uh yeah taylor swift's all right no i i do covers and uh I like to make beats, produce music. I'm interested in uh, camera work and uh, just the movie industry in general. Just the whole industry, the whole big thing as a whole. Is so you consider in. those your other interests? Yeah, definitely for sure. And writing, I love to write and uh, just be creative. Anything creative, I love to do. Well, you like to be creative, so can we see a clothing line for you? Like a little fashion design or anything? I'm not talking like some dresses, but maybe just some like you got on now. That's a pretty nice ensemble. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not very, uh, I'm not very stylish. I never have been uh, up on style, but... I don't know. Uh, me and P. Diddy have been working together on a little something, so that might uh, come boy. to fruition 
in 2011. So check that out. Well, you see you collaborating <laughs> with P. Diddy. What about some artists like Denzel Washington? Can we see you on the big screen? Uh, yeah, I love me some Denzel. That's all I'm going to say about that. Love me some Denzel. All right, there we go. Don't, I don't take you your actor then. Oh, uh, no, not an actor. <laughs> no. Let's respect it. Respect that man. Well, maybe some Hamlet or something, some Shakespearean to be or not to be. I, I'm not very Shakespearean, but I feel like if I was going to do anything, it would probably be uh, plays and stuff like that before movies. Probably better with that. Yeah, I understand. Well, like when you're on stage, when it'll be a player just performing a song, like what runs through your mind? Uh, it's actually a very quiet, uh, calm. I mean, sometimes you have a lot of different things going on in your head that you got to remember, but through all that, it uh, actually becomes a very calming feeling. And sometimes it's uh, the only chance you get to really be up in the world and relax, like is when you're performing, because it's a. Uh, I can't really explain it. It's very complicated, but it's nice. I like it. Well, six years from now, do you see that calm still being there, or do you see you just banging yourself out by signing autographs and all those sleepless nights going from trailer to trailer? Where do you see yourself? <laughs> I'd love that, uh, but uh, it's probably not realistic. Probably just in bars, New Jersey. I'd love to be out of the area, but um, probably New Jersey. You'll see me around in local bars, either doing an acoustic act or cover music, trying to break into original music. Uh, I'd love to do that. Who knows, though? I mean, I could be... Somewhere, hopefully in the entertainment industry, though, some little niche in the entertainment industry. Well, you mentioned the musical music, so would that original stuff be on your iPod or is it really some of your stuff or some, like, more known artists? Like, yeah. What do you have on there? Hopefully I'll have something of my own that I can listen to. I have some older stuff, just the joking around stuff. I love listening to, um, like I said, like underground hip-hop, alternative music, acoustic. Uh, acoustic fingerstyle music's great, but I go back to, like, blues, bluegrass. I like Pat Metheny group jazz, just smooth jazz and stuff. Stuff you listen to when you're at the dentist. Yeah. It's my favorite. Yeah, I love it. That's that it. elevator music That's and it. everything just bobbing your head. Yep. Well, besides that, who are some of your favorite artists to just go with the jazz and the country and the underground hip hop? Like, uh, can you give me some exact names? For to go with underground hip hop, I'm a huge fan of uh, Mad Lib and Dose One. I like, um, for some older stuff, some old finger style, like uh, bluegrassy type stuff, I'm a big fan of um, Mississippi John Hurt. Like I said, I Pat them. Metheny group. Yeah. All kinds of stuff like that. Uh, Michael Jackson. Ooh. Yeah, rest Ooh. in peace. Ooh. Big oh, fan. I'm holding this right now. Yep. Big fan. So, you're a big Michael Jackson fan. Do you yeah. have, like, any of his movies in your DVD player? Do you see This Is It? Like, what do you watch? I haven't <laughs> seen that yet. I don't know if I really uh, agree with the whole... Uh, thing, but I do have uh, his video. Uh, he has a DVD. It's all his music videos, like a big collection. I got that one. I watch that sometimes. So. Ah, the anthology classics. Yeah. So you seem to know your history when it goes to music. Yeah. Like, do you listen to your dad's old tapes? Just sneak them and stuff. Yeah, he's the one who puts me down on all kinds of stuff, especially in terms of guitar. He ta he taught me about um, oh gosh, everything. Paco DeLuca, John McCarthy, everything. Al Demiola, Pat Metheny. Chick Corea, all that stuff. He put me down at a young age, and it's kind of like he's telling me, oh, you need to listen to this guy, you need to listen to this guy, and I would be like, oh, yeah, whatever, Dad, you know, and I'd take the CD, and then a couple months later, I'd just pop it in and listen to it, and it would really actually alter my whole style and my whole view of guitars and instruments, so he's really uh, influenced me a lot. Well, if you could tour in any five places right now, where would they be? Five places. Uh, all right. The tri-state area is very nice. I like that. That's where I am right now, obviously, playing Delaware and stuff. But uh, uh, Florida would be great. I love California. Uh, hurricanes. Any place warm, yeah, except for all that stuff, all yeah, the natural disasters. <laughs> yeah. Try to avoid those on the road. That's right. <laughs> well, Pat, it's nice having you here today on oh, my thanks, show. Thanks for having me, Caitlin. Yes, it's a very nice experience. Can you take us out with a little music? Yeah, sure. Like very soothing. I suppose nice. I could do that.